Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. You know, ever since human beings started congregating in institutions of what we would call higher learning, colleges, universities, even monasteries, conservatives, traditionalists have been freaked out by just what dangerous ideas were being shared there. I mean, really, the whole dangerous ideas are coming out of the universities is literally as old as universities themselves. It has been a core reactionary concern for millennia. Just like everything else, this old thing is new again. Which brings us to the most recent Republican freakout in Florida, which, as you may have heard, has the governor there, Ron DeSantis, calling the creepy thought police to campus. He just signed a bill that will, and I quote here, require public universities and colleges to survey students, faculty and staff about their beliefs and viewpoints to support intellectual diversity. Not only that, he has gone on to suggest that budget cuts could take place if schools are found to be, quote, indoctrinating their students. Which is to say, one imagines if those surveys don't produce the right answers for DeSantis and his buddies. Now, on its face, this is a pretty outrageous use of state power to converse, coerce the beliefs and views of people by surveilling them, right? And threatening them to punish them if they have the wrong views. I mean, Ron DeSantis is claiming the mantle of freedom of conscience and free speech. But what he is doing here is just quite literally the opposite of that. I mean, it didn't take very long for the masks to fall off. All these folks like DeSantis who pretend to care a lot about free speech to start essentially suppressing it or compelling it when it doesn't say what they want. Whether it's in bills in state houses looking to ban teaching about certain aspects of the history of racism and structural white supremacy in this country, which is what at least 22 states are doing or already have done. Or DeSantis himself saying he will require students to get ins instruction on the, quote, evils of communism. OK, but to me, the most fascinating and revealing part of this has to do with the politics that are driving it all. Politics that are at the center of this moment. And Ron DeSantis said this thing when he announced this yesterday that to me was kind of a tell. I know a lot of parents, one of the things they worry about you know, if you send a kid to a university, you know, are they just going to basically be indoctrinated? Are they actually going to be taught to think for themselves, challenge assumptions, and really be critical thinkers and learners? We obviously want our universities to be focused on critical thinking, academic rigor. Uh, we do not want them as basically hotbeds for stale ideology. Huh. Well, let's talk about the word indoctrination there, right? Kind of always in the eye of the beholder. I mean, DeSantis clearly does not think it is indoctrination, the bad thing, to teach kids that communism bad, is bad as a state mandate. That's just education, right? <laughs> and I have no doubt the concern expressed here by Governor DeSantis is real. Here's what I mean, because there is something happening in American politics around education, specifically higher education, that is one of the prime drivers of the politics of this moment. So first of all, there's the generational aspect, right, which is that young people going off to college and then coming out of college and into the workforce are the most left leaning generational cohort by far. It shows up in exit poll after exit poll, a recent study published by the American Enterprise Institute that found that across 55 schools, only 26 percent of the surveyed students are conservative to some degree and half of the students are liberal in some capacity. And I imagine there are pro-Trump parents with MAGA hats, right, in places like Naples, Florida, who are genuinely terrified that when their 18-year-old goes off to Florida State, they're going to come back not being super psyched about their parents' political views. It's a real thing that happens in the world. I'm sure parents have said that to Ron DeSantis at some fundraiser. It's a microcosm of a bigger thing, which is more than generational, which is that our politics are increasingly dividing along the lines of education. Even when you control for other things, right, and some demographics across race or income, people with higher levels of education are more liberal. Those with less education, more conservative. Pew Research, in fact, found that from 2015 to 2019, the share of Republicans and those who lean Republicans saying colleges have a negative effect on the country went from 37 percent to 59 percent. This educational divide is particularly sharp among white people. In 2020, Joe Biden won 51 percent of white college graduates while getting 32 percent of support from white non-college graduates. Right. Big divide. We see that educational divide every election night when we look at the maps of the different regions or areas or neighborhoods where votes are coming across the country. Here's just one at random. Right. Here's Indiana. Basically all red except for a few blue, a few blue spots where you have the big city, Indianapolis. Right. And what else? Oh, the college towns. University of Indiana and Notre Dame. 
So there's a real thing Governor Ron DeSantis is putting his finger on, right? These colleges, people go into them, they come out liberals. What's going on? Except a solution for it is a perfect example of the kind of cultish authoritarianism in the modern Republican Party under Donald Trump. They have a political problem, clearly, right? Winning over college-educated voters. Political problem. Winning over young voters, particularly those coming out of college in record numbers, by the way, right? Because college attainment levels keep going up and up and up every year. So what do you do about that? Well, as opposed to thinking about what that would mean for reformulating the party, either in its substance or its message... The solution they come up with is to just take the sledgehammer of the state to the institutions of higher education. You see this everywhere you look now with the Republican Party. It's a party that is incredibly strong and robust. It's a party that controls more than 54 percent of all local state legislative seats across the country. Dominates, absolutely dominates huge swaths of America. And yet the Republican Party has lost the popular vote in seven of the last eight elections. Seven of the last eight elections failed to attain a plurality or majority. And so they have given up on figuring out how to appeal to a majority of the country. Instead, the modus operandi now is trying to find ways to use the power they have within their circles, right, to entrench their power even if they can't reach out. That's the logic behind voter suppression. That's the logic behind road procession. If we reduce turnout, if we make it harder to vote, well, then we can win without persuading new people to join our coalition. It's the logic on the display in this Florida bill, which is rather than try to figure out how to appeal this cohort, these people are moving through colleges and coming out liberals, right? College educated voters who are moving away from us. Let's just try to coerce these institutions with the possible threat of budget cuts into enforcing some kind of ideological rigidity and litmus test. It's particularly ironic for Governor DeSantis, who is in the state of Florida, has been fairly deft as a political operator, appealing to some of the people Donald Trump has alienated. I mean, as recent as last month, more than half of Floridians approved the job he was doing, right? In that sense, he's negotiated the politics of Florida pretty well. But here's the thing. He has national aspirations. This is what the National Party demands, which is why we go to war on the libs and all their institutions. Institutions that now apparently include the United States military, which we will have more on later. Because that's the version of the modern Republican Party, right? The party of the 45th president, previous president, had, has made it a party of the 47 percent. That's Trump's vote percentage. 47 percent. Now, how do you govern with 47 percent in a democracy, right, <laughs> where you need a majority? How do you use the power from 47 percent to protect your power? How do you give up on winning a majority of voters, but keep power in your hands with a minority? That is the focus of the Republican Party at this moment.